Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. Just thought we'd do a quick video on checking if your alternator is functioning correctly and checking if your battery sort of seems okay too. So a little bit of information there showing you what you should be seeing. Um, now, if you haven't got a battery load tester, which most people haven't, all you've really got to rely on, in, yeah, rely on is you know voltage and voltage readings, which is pretty simple. Everybody can own and probably should own at least a small cheap uh, multimeter. And if you're away on a trip more than 100 k's from home, you should probably take it with you as part of your spare, you know, spare parts, bits and pieces, that sort of thing. Um, there's other ways you can do it. If you've got um, voltage, you know, output sort of readings, you know, you can buy little things that go in your cigarette lighter for about five or six bucks off eBay that show you the temperature and the voltage so they're handy they're not super accurate but they're close enough to give you a guide for what you want to check now if your battery light comes on generally what it means is look I don't know the exact specific voltage but once it goes under a certain voltage that's where your battery light comes on it could be your battery it could be your alternator but it's most likely going to be your alternator that's not charging um, if you've got a really old battery then maybe there's a chance the battery is completely dead but Generally, if your alternator is charging, your battery light's going to be off. So I'm going to blame the alternator for the battery light. It's a bit old, isn't it? They should have an alternator light instead of a battery light. Wasn't too intelligent, was it? <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> this battery, it hasn't been the vehicle hasn't been run or charged for at least a few days, and it's had the doors open and stuff like that, draining the main cranking battery here, which is almost I'll keep forgetting, but it's a bit must be coming up near six years old. 2015, uh, I think it was replaced, replaced early 15, unless it was 14, so early 15, just past five years old. We'll stick to the about five and a half year old thing, so really past their use by date if you want a reliable battery. The average life of a battery is about four years. So I'm just going to give you some basic information, which I've mentioned before with battery voltages. If you've got a good battery, and when I say good battery and when you want to rely on voltages, first thing you need to understand is if you charge a battery, it's going to have charge voltage during that and shortly afterwards. So if you've charged a battery, if you've run the engine, that's charging the battery, or if you had it plugged in on a charger, you need to let it settle for a little while. And at least an hour, some batteries takes even longer. You know, If you can, without any load on it, even longer, 24 hours. Not always possible. If it's your vehicle and you're out on a trip somewhere and oh, your car won't start and you've got your multimeter and you want to check your battery, if you come to your battery and connect normally with a multimeter, you'll just have a couple of, you know, positive and negative, you know, that's negative, that's positive. Red, you know, red's the plus, whatever. We're not using those. We've got the clips connected to the battery because this unit's got two readouts. If you've got a good battery that's charged, the, the voltage readings should be between 12.65 and 12.8 is generally a good battery. So that's a guide. That's not to say that a really good battery or one that's recently been charged won't be a bit higher, 12.9, 13. And of course, a battery that if you've been sitting there with the doors open and the, back, the alternator hasn't been charging, your battery voltage can be down as well. So don't think because your battery voltage is down a little bit, um, you need a new battery because that could be wrong as well. You really need to get to testing the alternator and that's what we're going to do. So if you're car won't start because the battery's flat, don't just think battery, because it could be your alternator not charging, which is why your battery lights come on and they've done the battery thing, right? Your battery's flat, the alternator's not charging. Often the alternator is the cause of the flat battery. Usually that's what it is. Just remember, average life of a battery four years, so I'd recommend replacing batteries at about four years if you want ultimate reliability, so you don't get caught out. These batteries, the only reason they're older, it's R&D. Well, it's, I keep saying it's not D actually, we're not developing anything, but we really want to push these Optimas out um, because people want to, we've seen it with other batteries, we've heard stories of reliable sources of these lasting 10 years. How good are they going to be in 10 years? I don't know, but I'd like to find out. You're going to get in this video, you'll get to hear this vehicle start with a battery. I can tell you the reading at the moment's 12.34. So it's certainly not very exciting um, with those doors being open, the vehicle not being run and with an old battery. It's not in that range and I'd normally say Optimas are a higher higher than your typical 12.65 um, to 12.8. They're normally more like 12.9 or more. If they've been charged, they'll sit above 13 for quite a while. So 
So we've got that sorted. The battery should be sitting in around that range. Now, if it's flat, it's gonna be lower. It's gonna be down around 12, 11.8, if it's really flat, whatever, it could be anything. So we can't go by that too much. We need to get it started, but we've got a flat battery. So if you've got your Redark SB112, you could then connect your wire and use your other battery perhaps, because I know that other battery at the moment, it's been on charge. It's always on maintenance charge, that auxiliary battery, usually, which is maintaining this as well, because if they're connected together, then, the charge is connected to that one, but it will feed back to this one also. But this one hasn't been on charge this time, it was just that one. But I know the other one's good, it's on 12.8 or something like that at the moment. So you could use that to start your car if you're set up for it. Other than that, you need someone, another car, another battery with a set of jump lids. You do need to jump start the car. See, this is the problem with the videos, right? The maximum information always goes in there. So it's not just a quick check your alternator. It was going to be that, but I can't help myself. So. Basically, you're going to need a good set of jump lids and a good connection. The best way to do it is to be very careful. They need to, you know, you need to be careful what leads you use, jump starters and stuff like that. Make sure you connect them the right way. Connect the flat battery last and the negative last. And if you can, don't connect direct to the battery in case they move and fall and touch each other. It's going to short out, possibly cause some other problems. If you can, always take the negative to like the bonnet catch or some other earth on the vehicle. Hope you get what I mean. It's not about jump starting so much. Okay, so we're going to get the vehicle started. What voltage should we see? This is what you want to know. The voltage that we should see once the engine is started should be either side of the 14 volts is a good charge rate. Now, every vehicle varies. Um, it can be anything as low as 13 and a half. Um, sometimes they start up, the, they'll be higher. Um, smart alternators, you know, and they, they vary. It's a variable voltage alternator, so it could be anything from 13, 3, 13, 5, 13, 8. Basically that is charging. I'd like to see around 13.8 to 14.2 is what I like. I believe that gives the battery a good charge. This vehicle has the alternator voltage booster diode installed. So it will charge at about half to 0.6 of volt higher than the vehicle would without that. So it's still variable. So it might start up at 14 and a half even and end up down around 14. Depends if you've got your lights on, what load you got on, all that sort of thing. So. On this one, we can see it's 12.34. We've said what it should be if your alternator is charging. So I'm going to go ahead and start the engine and let's have a look and see what we've got. Eh? about the noise we've got the engine running so it's going to be a little bit harder to hear me so we won't do this for too long but what I like to point out we've got 14.5 four volts coming from the alternator and the other thing I'd like to point out even though that optimum is so old and the voltage was down to uh, what was that 12.34 and I even saw it 12.28 while the interior light was on very low See how well it started the engine. They are just absolutely dynamite, these batteries. I'm very impressed, even if you're not. So you can see the 14.5 volts, okay? Now, we're not gonna leave the engine running too long because you probably can't hear me. It's gonna be a bit annoying and nothing's gonna change. So I'll go ahead and switch the engine off and we'll talk about what happens after that. Isn't that better? It's just peace and quiet. Hey guys, on this video, for those watching live, making a video for our YouTube channel on how to check alternators with a bit of information on batteries. Okay, so what do we got here? This is what I'm talking about. Now it's up to 12.94. Does that mean this battery's charged? No, that's what I'm talking about. It's just been charged. The alternator was just pumping it. Now this has gone off, we'll just turn it back on again. It times out after about five minutes, maybe 10. All right, so 12.87, you can see that in this video. You can monitor and watch that if you like. Then you'll get to learn and get the gist of what happens after the engine's been running. So let's assume we just jump started the vehicle. The engine starts, we see an alternator charge rate like that, either side of the 14. 
with the booster diode was 14.5 something so I'd say without the diode in place it would have been about 14 okay now don't get me wrong it doesn't stay that high it does drop down that's how they roll it's a variable voltage alternator okay so that's as simple as it is really so you've got all that bonus information simple as it is um, to check your alternator that's the sort of this is battery voltage so if I haven't explained it clearly battery voltage is about 12 and a half to 13 you know you just switched it off it was closer to 13 this one's going to drop to 12 and a half because it's it needs a charge it needs a run that's what's going to happen after this video best way to look after your batteries is keep them full think of it that way any vehicle in a battery keep it full you can't always do that that's why cycling it does damage the battery so by having a fridge in your car all the time running it's just gonna it's just gonna it's kind of like using up your battery unnecessarily so when you park the vehicle if you can plug it on a charger to maintain it that's even better your batteries are going to last longer and maybe that's why these last so long don't get me wrong that blue one at the back there which you can't see in this video because it's not really relevant it gets absolutely pumped it's been left days with fridges running so it really gets hammered but it also gets looked after now just looking at this voltage you can see it dropping down 12.7 obviously battery voltage as soon as we start the car you'll see charge voltage. Let's do it one more time. Yep, and I've got the squeaky shoes on again today. Have you noticed I've got some squeaky shoes? They're nice and comfy, but they're squeaky. All right, so that's the deal. You can see it again. Didn't go up too much because it hardly had a chance to kick in. And you can see how fast it's dropping. So this battery definitely needs a charge. If you haven't got charge voltage, if you jump start the vehicle, right? And as soon as you disconnect the leads, the vehicle engine stops. That's because your alternator's not charging and the battery you've got in the vehicle is also that flat. It hasn't got enough gigawatts right from what was it back to the future what was the doc, doc's name doc yeah anyway whatever his name is anyway um emmett right anyway not enough gigawatts to even run the engine so it's just going to stop if you disconnect the jump car battery and it runs okay but not so well it could be just running on what's left that battery here's recovered a little bit um so that's the deal once you get it running once you disconnect those leads, if it keeps running and it runs well, that's where you want to have your get your multimeter connected onto there's fine. You don't have to go to the alternator or anything. On the battery, it's all connected directly with massive cables. Um, get in there, check the voltage. If you're seeing charge voltage, you know your alternator's fine. And it can be an intermittent problem, okay? I'm going to give you a quick story with this one. Approximately six weeks ago, this vehicle right here, uh, one afternoon in Daniloquin, the battery light came on okay and i thought oh awesome anyway then you start thinking about your rac total gear yeah, glad that i've got that in place glad i'll carry a, a spare alternator oh bugger someone on the trip that we share that alternator with has headed home and they took the alternator with them the day before <laughs> isn't it always the way but anyway I thought awesome okay so then i thought we'll park the vehicle we'll get the batteries charged up we've got two there all accessories off we'll try and make it home worst case scenario um, RAC can get us the rest of the way home So did all the tests checked all the fuses and everything um, Couldn't get rid of the battery light didn't matter what I did put the batteries on charge The next day in the afternoon I started the vehicle and checked it and the battery light was off the, You know it was fine and the alternator was charging Thought that's interesting. We'll see what happens in the morning left the batteries on charge um, Next morning the alternator's charging, drove the vehicle around the park, charging, no problem, looking good, let's get out of here. Ran about 20, 30 k's down the road, the battery light flickered a couple of times and we watched the voltage drop to, down to, there's a video on that, okay? I'm not sure which channel it's on, but there's a video on that. You can see that happening and it's now been over five weeks since then. We've been driving the vehicle, have not seen the battery light come on or the battery light flicker the voltage drop or anything whatsoever so i'm interested to hear from anyone else also that's had an experience like that yes there's something got to be done about the alternator we can't risk it and leave it like that but while we're in lockdown um, i'm doing a bit of r d to see what the heck is going on there i've spoken to the auto elect he's got 
many decades of experience and he's not too sure either. He sort of seems to think, yeah, the rectifier or whatever, the usual sort of thing, but why it would drop out and come back like that. Anyway, we'll get it looked at, we'll get to the bottom of it. So if you haven't already, subscribe so we can provide you that information once it comes in. If you got something out of that, give us a thumbs up and bada boom, bada bing, we're out of here. So yeah, thanks for watching.